Well, good morning, Transplant Helper community. My name is Jim Merle, and today I'm pausing for just a moment both to commemorate and to celebrate my seven-year transplant anniversary. Now, I know there have been several of you throughout the years as you follow this channel. You probably watched my transplant anniversary celebrations from the years past. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed them. I hope you've kind of gotten some insight from them. I've tried to go through each year, kind of give a word to go along with each year, and then in turn describe what that year has been like. I've told you so many times here on the program, at least I hope I've relayed it properly, that transplant is a treatment, not a cure. So living the transplant life is not always easy. It's rarely perfect. It's not always exactly what you want, but it is certainly a blessing, okay? So before I go any farther, let me just say how thankful, how blessed, how enormously appreciative I am for the wonderful man who gave life to me. His name was Dickie Lowe. Uh, we refer to him as Dickie, that's his nickname. But anyway, Richard Lowe, um, he passed away actually uh, day before yesterday is when he had an accident where he was actually hit by a hit and run type driver situation. We'll go into all of that. But nonetheless, that is the day that Dickie, for all intents and purposes, lost his life. Now, there was a several day process in there where obviously his family were mourning over the loss, trying to make a decision over what to do. And ultimately, they decided because they assumed it would be his wishes to give the gift of life. And because of Dickie, several lives were saved, including my own, and I'm so, so thankful for that. I'm also so very blessed that throughout this seven year period, I've had the wonderful opportunity of getting to know more and more his family. I've been out to visit with them. They've been out here to Alabama to visit me. We spent a lot of time together. As a matter of fact, I talked to my donor mama or transplant mama, whatever you wanna call her, Miss Louise, usually on a weekly basis we don't always get that in but usually on a weekly or bi-weekly basis and we really enjoy uh, spending that time together i really really encourage you if you're a donor family and of course this is obviously your choice but if you're a donor family and you can at all reach out or maybe they reach out to you to the recipient family and have a relationship i really think that is absolutely the best thing you can do i think building that relationship building that that love for one another making that extended family i really think that's a good decision i think it's something that helps both parties i know personally it's helped me tremendously to be able to go through these seven years and more to appreciate the gift that i've been given uh, if not for any other reason because i know a little bit about the life of dicky i know how he lived i know how he was but more than that being able to connect with his family with his sisters with his mother uh, everybody involved has been a tremendous blessing for me. And I really feel like, and of course they've relayed this to me to some extent, I really feel like it's been a blessing to them as well to kind of be able to hold on to just a little bit of Dickie and uh, what he meant to them and to try to, to make it through this life. I know it's difficult. I talked to Miss Louise, that's my donor's mother, uh, mama. I talked to her on yesterday, the anniversary of his death. And um, we had a great conversation, but I know, I know how difficult, I know how hard that day, this whole week, uh, really every day since that time, seven years ago, I know how hard that's been. But anyway, nonetheless, today uh, is May the 23rd, so I'm celebrating my seventh year heart transplant anniversary, and I'm, I'm really happy to do that. Again, I'm so blessed. I'm enormously overwhelmed with, with gratitude. And, and I just hope that, that all of you watching this, that you are able to reach a milestone like this, that you ought to make those those days turn into months and those months turn into years and hopefully I will one day make these years turn into decades and uh, I think that would be wonderful. I know as technology increases, as you know, developments come out, the, the opportunity, the, the chances of survival post-transplant become greater and so the possibilities are probably unknown to this point. But uh, right now I'm, I'm very blessed with the time that I've been given. It's been a wonderful blessing to be able to see my children grow up. I've told you before, uh, I had two children originally by birth and we have since adopted three children on the other side and to see them growing and developing is wonderful. To be able to spend time with my wife, my parents are still living, so just a lot that goes into the fact of how appreciative, how thankful I am for every wonderful day. Now I chose to do this outside because of course recently I've been outside quite a bit with the whole quarantine lockdown situation. My children are at home. Uh, they're actually out for the summer now. School finished up. My daughter graduates high school 
uh, just the other day. So, you know, uh, we're glad to be home together. My wife's working from home, but I've been outside a lot more because it's just easier to come out here. But the real truth behind that is I love being outdoors. Man, the beauty, the blessed opportunity we have to live where we do in this small country town in Alabama is absolutely wonderful. We can go so many different directions and see beautiful things, including our own backyard. Um, I'm in my yard right now, spending time out here just in amongst the trees and the bushes and uh, hear the, the, you know, the birds tweeting around me. I know a lot of you comment about that a lot of times, that you can hear the birds. Um, I'm glad because to me that is absolutely the most beautiful music that could be created. I love to hear the squirrels. Sometimes the squirrels go by, you can hear them scampering through the trees and just different things definitely definitely blessed to be out here so i wanted to come out here today because this is one of my favorite places i'll show you some others kind of as we go through this i'll flash some places on the screen that i love just as much if not more but this here is one of my favorite places to be so let me go back i, I had to bring a, a a little card today i usually don't use notes or anything like that no script obviously uh but i had to bring a little card today to kind of jot down some of my memories from these seven years and to give you what i believe to be a word hopefully of encouragement that i've learned uh, one word for each year as i've done in the past of course we're adding number seven to it this time but a word for each year that, that really defines and describes uh, what i've been through in the first year there year number one i i wrote down then and i still believe it now that was a word of intensity that was a year of intensity okay and I mean by that, there were, there were a lot of intense moments there. Obviously, the wait for transplant, the not knowing, the laying in the hospital as I did for about a month or so, waiting on transplant, those were intense moments emotionally. I mean, that was, that was heart-wrenching to try to go through that, uh, to try to just wonder if tomorrow would ever come, just wonder if there would ever be the gift to come. And that was intense. I can remember right after transplant, not all of you felt this way, but I can remember after transplant, uh, waking up to a wonderful what turned out to be a wonderful recovery but there was some intense pain going on then uh being a heart transplant patient of course had my chest cracked there was a lot of pain involved with that had a, a defibrillator slash icd removed here that like i've had a lot of patients tell me that was the most painful thing they had to take that out of the muscle and it had been embedded for quite a while so that was extremely painful uh, i actually had a a chest tube there were three i think coming out right in here had a chest tube that got off of uh the place where it's supposed to be and was rubbing against the lung we didn't know what it was to begin with wow you talk about some awful intense pain <laughs> if it hadn't been for my wonderful nurse at the time isaiah and him being willing to shoot me up with uh fentanyl i think it's fentanyl he was shooting fentanyl in my port in my neck uh probably not the best idea but hey that that helped me to survive so shout out to isaiah if he ever were to see this wonderful wonderful nurse so kind a lot of people attending to me then but he uh, he was the man with the meds <laughs> so i needed him right then but it was intense i mean just intense as far as the emotional side the, the pain was intense uh the 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 unbelievable intense feelings that were crossing my mind i've done entire programs on the emotion of transplant uh, so many things flowing through my mind from excitement to joy to pain to uh, sadness to regret all those things flow through so the first year really was a year of intensity there's a lot of bugs around here if you see me fanning them off i just have to do that okay uh, so the first year was intensity second year i marked down as being impatient it was the year of impatience because you know after making it through that first year and realizing I had had a good recovery, realizing that things had gone well. I think I was really looking for that second year to get over that one year hump, to get in the second year and just to be able to do anything. I mean, I don't know if I was planning to run marathons or, or try do triathlons like my good friend Mark Barber was able to do and some others. I don't know exactly what I was hoping to do, but I didn't quite accomplish that. And I was just being impatient. I mean, even though I was a year out, that second year, and I've told many people, sometimes that second year is a little more difficult than the first year uh, because some of your medications come down so you get off of some of those side effects, but you also lose a little bit of the buffer uh, that those medications were giving you. I say that <coughs> inside the first year, we're kind of living in a bubble and the bubble pops after the first year and you're just out there on your own during the second year. So I was very impatient 
um, wanted to do more than I could. So I had a lot of days during that second year where I really pushed myself much too hard, uh, did too much, and I would always land on the couch. So I probably did a lot of videos in the uh, second to third year. Well, I guess I couldn't. I didn't start this channel until later. But anyway, I did a lot of thinking within that second year about, you know, um, what was possible, what could be done, and just being frustrated and, as I say, impatient with what I was able to do. And that's not really the right attitude to have, but it's normal. So I shared that with you about that second year. On the third year, the third year coming up, um, I call that the year of improvement because finally I got through the first year, the second year, and then I got to that place in the third year where I not only hit a plateau, uh, I started to climb back up the mountain again. I started to improve. I started to get more in shape. I started to be able to do more and more and more. And I'd done a lot right out of transplant. I've told you before, I was able to walk three, four miles within the first week of transplant. But now it was a different kind of walk. It wasn't a forced walk. It wasn't a walk where I had to push myself and challenge myself and, you know, just just to go that extra lap just so I could say I did. The, the, this year right here, the third year of improvement was a year where I really started to notice things clicking. I really started to notice things lining up and, and things about me as a whole, whether it be physical, emotional, even spiritual. I noticed things improving and I noticed things getting better. And so I was excited for that year. And I don't know exactly how to be for any of you, but I hope that your third year, if you get to that point, if you're past that point, maybe you can look back and say, yeah, that was a year for me. That, that was a big year of improvement where uh, things felt like they were definitely worth it. And, uh, year number four, and I've written this one down because it's been a couple years ago, three years ago, but year number four was a year of inconceivable things, inconceivable things. This was the year uh, I missed it a while ago. This was the year, the fourth year, is when I actually started this this uh, series of videos. When I sat down in front of the camera for the first time with that list written out of about 15 videos that I would do and just, just hope that someone would see them and hope that someone would, would, would gain something from that. And so I sat down with that, uh, that list of 15 videos uh, then in this uh, un inconceivable of years and I could not imagine, I couldn't conceive uh, what the future would hold. I could not imagine then the number of videos <clears throat> that we would be able to uh, put behind us. We're at 500. This video, I guess, will be 509. 509 videos as of this one right here. The, so I, I just never conceived that. I never conceived that there would be over 6,000, almost 6,200 people that would subscribe to a channel like this. I never conceived that I would get literally, literally, you know dozens and dozens of emails and, and messages every day asking questions uh, asking for support uh, one thing i haven't never i never conceived that i've been so thrilled about is i've had so many people in the last couple of years that you know when they get that call for transplant i think i'm one of the first people they reach out to you know they send me a message and say on my way for transplant just got the call uh, several people were like that uh, bailey craig's one that continues to stand out of my mind bailey craig is an absolute unbelievable inspiration to so many and and i was one of the ones that she she sent a message to and said i got the call and we had a little conversation there um several others have done that recently and i'm just i'm so thankful for that it's such a wonderful thing it's so inconceivable uh that i could be uh seen maybe as a part of your your friend group your family because uh i really want you to know that you are a part of mine you are definitely a part of my family. I used to say extended family, but I don't even call it extended family. I just say enormous family now because you're no, you're no different um, in many ways than the people inside of my house uh, in my home. Uh, you're just, it's unbelievable what you mean uh, to me. So year four was a year of inconceivable things. We started the program. We found some growth. I found a family and I'm excited for that. Number five, year number five, I've got down here was a year of involvement. A year of involvement. It's year five when I had already been doing some work as far as the transplant helper. You probably remember the transplant helper didn't start in front of the camera like this. It started in a hospital room, sitting down talking to some patients that really at, the, at that moment I was trying to learn from, uh, but later ended up teaching a little bit and encouraging, I hope, a lot. Uh, but it was in year five that I decided I've really got to be involved more. There's got to be more to this than a few face-to-face -face visits in a transplant center and more to this than, you know, some videos, which again, the 500 plus videos, that's a lot, but 
I want to do more than that. I want to be the person who's, you know, working all the booze and the health shows and health fairs and, you know, down at the down at the ball field on Friday night. Friday night football's big around here. Uh, you know, reminding people about the importance of organ donation. I want to be involved in the lives of you, uh, not just in answering questions, but like I mentioned, some people reaching out and saying, hey, I got the call, or that kind of thing. I love being involved in that. I love being a part of you and a part of your family, and I love being a part of supporting organ donation. And just here recently in the past month, there's been a big push here in Alabama to try to get us an organ donor tag. I've had a couple of videos on that. I want to be involved in getting that done, making sure that that happens uh, so that we can help to raise awareness. And so year five was a year of involvement. It's a year when I set my mind to be involved, and I really think I became more involved. Of course, there's always room to grow in that area, and I hope to, but that's what it was. Now, year number six, I got to lay this down to do this. Uh, year number six was a year of intuition. And I had to think about this one pretty hard. Year six was a year, and I'll explain intuition in a minute, but it was the year when, uh, as I'd gone through, year one, two, three, four, five, middle of six, I thought I was kind of, you know, rocking on. Uh, the boat was just ebb and flowing. There were good days, there were bad days, and there were ups and there were downs, and I thought that's just the way it was. But it was in year number six that I received the news that I was suffering with uh, 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 trans, well, hold on, I gotta get my words right. I was suffering with aortic stenosis, which is a hardening of the aortic valve. And my aortic valve had gotten to the point where it was, there was no way to repair it, no way to work around it. And of course, back in June of last year, so it'll be a year in about a month, not quite a month, not quite, just a few days short of a month. Back in June, I had my aortic valve replaced, and I was thankful that I was able to do that as a transcatheter method. And so the reason I call that a, word, a year of intuition is because that's kind of the way my doctors put it to me. They said it, it may be the right time, it may not. For me, I thought it may be the right time to replace that valve, and it may not. For my family, it may be the right time, and it may not. You know, Everybody that kind of threw in to try to determine and decide if it was the moment I needed to go through and get the aortic valve replaced, which could have been potentially very, very dangerous, uh, could have been very involved. Thankfully, it did turn into a transcatheter method where they came up through my groin, but could have easily turned into another open heart surgery, which nobody wanted to do. Um, it took a little intuition. It took some thinking. It took some doctors and myself as well sitting in a room and saying, you know what, my, my gut feeling, my gut feeling is we need to go with this. So my intuition is that we need to go with this. And so I had to do that several times throughout the, the that, uh, that year right there, that sixth year. I had to kind of make some decisions and choices, not based upon absolute numbers and facts in a cath lab or anything. I just had to go with what seemed right. And thankfully, it, it turned out to be right. And uh, I made some huge strides after that. I think uh, after transplant, I felt good. Uh, I was much improved, obviously being a congenital patient sick all my life, things were much better. But it wasn't until after the aortic valve replacement that I really got that, you know, that real shot in the arm that kind of made me have a little go-go juice and be able to go and to do. And uh, there's still bad days, there are ups and there's downs. I actually personally, be honest, I'm going to be honest on everything if I can. To be honest with you, I don't feel as good right now as I did last June right after the process, so I don't know what's happening there. I know my blood pressure's been giving me a little trouble. That could indicate a little blockage or whatever, so we're working with that right now. And uh, when I go back in for my cath, which was actually was scheduled for today, um, I'll go back in for my cath next month, we hope, if we can get past some of this virus stuff, and uh, we'll see what's going on there. I don't think it's gonna be a big deal, but I do think it's gonna be something we gotta tweak in there a little bit keep things going but it was a it was a year of intuition and so we'll just kind of continue in that a little bit and try to make the right choices based on you know gut feelings and and uh you know what we think might be right so anyway here we go last one here year number seven what is year number seven been like wow year number seven has definitely been a year uh it started out like any other year um in my i'm not marking years starting with january i'm starting again from may the 23rd uh, that was my transplant anniversary or transplant date so starting may 23rd rocked on normal typical summer normal typical whatever you know go through year seven and uh then this happened then covid 19 coronavirus came and it has definitely been a year of improvisation improvisation that's the word 
you know, Mumford folks, I'm just no country boy. Let me be honest with you. I'm just no country boy. And usually people from my small town don't use words like this. As a matter of fact, I don't use words like this. I needed a word that started with letter I to put with this for, for memory and for paper's sake. Uh, but anyway, the word improvisation. We have definitely had to improv right now. Uh, every every plan that you've made, every plan that, you, the, that you've had uh, this year probably has been been changed uh, plans have been changed you know we plan to do this and to do that and go on this vacation and spend time doing that and instead we're we're here we're at home and things have been a lot different so it's been a year of improvisation for everybody again my transplant clinic that i was supposed to be today instead of sitting here i should have been laying back on a cath table today instead of doing that i'm here and uh, you know, we just uh, we'll hope to try again in June. But we're having to improvise. We're having to adjust. We're having to adapt. We're having to to change everything. Everything about our lives is different, and it's been it's been upsetting. It's really been upsetting to see, you know, people struggling. There's been loss loss of life. There's been mu as much as that, if not more, a loss of people's lifestyles. You know, they're losing their jobs or they're being laid off or at least they're not being able to work in the same capacity. It's been a been a tough, tough time worldwide uh, here in the United States. It's been extremely difficult. Some areas are hot spots. Some are not. Thankfully, I live in an area again that is not such a hot spot. But it's been a tough time, man. It's been a very tough time this year. And so it's definitely been a year of improvisation. So going back through the list, first year was a year of intensity. Second year was a year of impatience. Third year, a year of improvement. Fourth year, inconceivable things. Uh, fifth year, a year of involvement. Uh, sixth year, a year of intuition, having to make some decisions, kind of off the cuff. And then the seventh year, the one we're just closing out, for me at least, again, that calendar year being May, in May, uh, it's definitely been a year of improvisation. Anyway, I thank you so very much for watching this video. It's 20 plus minutes, I get that. Um, for watching this video, for spending time with me. There is no way I can possibly relate to you um, how important each of you are to my life, how important you are to me being able to go through the journey I have, and how important it is just to know that you're there and that you support me. And I, I hope that you understand I always support you, anything that you need. And I've had people before say, are you available 24-7? Yep. Pretty much. Uh, if I'm tied up, I may not get back to you. Things are hectic right now, but I will get back to you as soon as possible. And more times than not, I had someone last night uh, text me. I, I say last night. It was 1.15, 1.15, 1.16 this morning they text me. I heard the beep or the buzz or whatever my phone did, and I answered back because I want to be there for you. I want to assist you. I want to help you. I know my journey of seven years compared to some is not very long compared to many of you. That looks like something that you, you know, that's so far out in the future, you can't even imagine getting to it. But I hope that you all do. I tell people all the time, I don't want to be a record setter. Um, I want to see others set records. I want to see others be the longest living transplant. Now, you can do that after I finish doing it. <laughs> but, you know, I want to see us all to reach the, the highest of the heights we can possibly reach, to go as far as we can go, to run this race as long as we can run it and to live the best life we can. And as we do that, I hope that we always, that we stay stronger, as I always say, and I remind you that includes physically, that includes emotionally, and that includes spiritual strength. I hope that you find all of that. I hope that your journey is great. And thank you so much again for celebrating with me. Here it is, May the 23rd, 2020, as uh, Barbara Walters used to say, 2020. Uh, it's May the 23rd, 2020 my seven year transplant anniversary and i'm happy to be able to spend at least a part of it here with you i love each of you i'm always available if you need me thank you so much and until next time stay stronger friends <laughs>